Migo's successful run of World's Greatest Superheroes ended in 1983, officially allowing Marvel and DC superheroes to go their separate ways after having been a part of the same action figure line since 1975. DC achieved three years and 33 figures worth of success with Kenner's Superpowers line, while Marvel landed at Mattel with 12 figures released in the United States and three figures from their canceled Wave 3 dumped in European markets in an attempt to hide their shame from the action figure world. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is 10 Things You Need to Know About Mattel's Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars. <laughs> Number one, in 1983, Mattel was looking for a brand to play sidekick to their wildly successful Masters of the Universe. It's a brilliant marketing move. Reel you in with the half-naked sci-fi barbarians and close the deal with superheroes shooting their guns and riding motorcycles. They originally courted DC Comics' slate of superheroes, but lost out to Kenner, you know, Kenner, those Star Wars guys with all that Star Wars money. Wanting to stay in the superhero game, but not really wanting to do a lot of work, spend a lot of money, or take anything away from their He-Man sales, they went to Marvel as their second choice and made sure that Marvel knew it from that moment on. Number two, why call it Secret Wars? According to Mattel, those are two words that tested very well with adolescent boys back in 1983. Oh, to be a fly on the wall of that marketing research meeting room. Boys, boys, settle down now. Eyes up here. I'm gonna say some words and you just raise your hand when you hear a word that you like. Secret. Unicorn. Farts. Race car. Girls. Countage. Uzi. Wars. Alright, thanks for your time, everyone. This has been very enlightening. Number three, Mattel basically said to Marvel, and I'm paraphrasing here, look, we want to make toys out of your characters, but we don't want to do a lot of work or spend a lot of money. Make us some comics or something since we ain't got no movie or cartoons like our strong, smart, beautiful He-Mans. Marvel responded with writer Jim Shooter and artist Mike Zek cranking out 12 issues of a landmark limited series event over the course of a year that would redefine the way Marvel Comics developed multimedia cross-promotional efforts. Both loved and hated by comics diehards, the Secret Wars comics made significant changes to characters, team rosters, and the fundamental power structure within the Marvel Universe itself. It was a bold creative achievement, an evolutionary progression for a comic book company whose characters were beloved household names, but can you really blame Mattel for basically ignoring it? I mean, come on, comics are for kids. Number four, Wave 1 hit stores in 1984 and featured four good guys, Spider-Man in his original red and blue costume, Captain America, Wolverine, and Iron Man, which technically, was the first James Rhodes action figure. You probably know him better as War Machine, but at the time, he was the guy in the Iron Man armor while Tony Stark was in rehab. The four bad guys were Dr. Doom, Dr. Octopus, Dr. Magneto, and Dr. Kang. While all of these characters do actually appear in the Secret Wars comics, it's hard to argue that they were the eight most important or most desirable characters specifically on the bad guys team. No kid has ever said to himself, yes, Kang. In fact, in 1984, no kid said that, ever. You can probably still find Kang pegwarming on toy shelves today. Look all the way in the back. After the first wave, it was clear that Mattel was just pulling crap out of their corporate butts when it came to character selection. Any pretense that the toys had anything to do with the comics was abandoned after they repainted the Spider-Man figure to showcase his new black and white alien suit. Wave 2 featured Falcon, Daredevil, Baron Zemo, and Hobgoblin, four characters who didn't appear in a single panel of the 12 months of comics produced by Marvel. Number five, every figure came with a shield that had a lenticular gimmick allowing kids to change out the inserts to reveal various scenes featuring that character or secret personal information like their non-hero identity, endangering every loved one they fought so hard to protect. As a kid, I know for me, it was tough to know if these shields and the things they revealed about the characters were actually supposed to exist in the world of the figure, or just in my world, which makes me question who really should have been holding that shield. Spider-Man doesn't need to be reminded that he's Peter Parker, but sometimes I forget. Ironically, while shields were the main gimmick of the line and there were other accessories included like laser guns and birds, Captain America's iconic shield was noticeably, awkwardly absent. But then what's a guy gonna do with two shields, right? Number six, Secret Wars wasn't just about the figures in the comics, other promotional tie-ins including coloring books, puffy stickers, crappy dime store target shooting garbage games, and even a beach towel, which I swear I swear to God, if it ever turns up on eBay, you had better not bid against me because I need that thing. 
Number seven, the line died a quick, quiet death being canceled while Wave 3 was actually coming off the action figure making machines in the Chinese factories. To hide the shame of the underwhelming line, Mattel shipped the few samples of Iceman, Electro, and Constrictor, three more characters who never appeared in the comics, to the much smaller European markets, which ironically has made them incredibly valuable to American collectors today. Number eight, while it wasn't the most successful line of action figures, it did mark a number of Marvel firsts. It was the first symbiote suit Spider-Man long before anyone knew about Venom. It was the action figure debut for Magneto, James Rhodes, Wolverine, Kang, Doc Ock, Baron Zemo, Daredevil, Iceman, Constrictor, Electro, Hobgoblin. It's a much shorter list if I just say that the only figures who weren't making their figure debut were Captain America, Spider-Man, Doctor Doom, and Falcon. And some would argue that as underwhelming as the overall line was, it's still some of the best versions of several of these characters that have ever been made. Much better than any of the figures who found their way into the 1990 Toy Biz line. Number nine, like every line that wasn't properly supported from its inception and died before it should have, there were plans for more figures. Over the years, artwork has turned up showing lenticular shield insert art for Hulk, Mystique, Mr. Fantastic, Thunderball, Annihilus, Abomination, and Dazzler. Yes, Dazzler and Mystique, two female characters. Some former employees claim to have seen actual sculpts for the Hulk and possibly even the Thing, but we'll never know for sure unless something verifiable turns up on the secondary market. Number 10, figures in good condition for most of the characters will run $10 to $15. Carded samples are going to be more like $20 to $50. But the late figures like Hobgoblin and all three of the European dumps are going to be the tougher ones to get. Even loose samples of Iceman, Constrictor, and Electro can go for $100 or more. Mint on car card, and you may need to sell your car. Those are the 10 things you need to know about Mattel's Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars, a line that ended too soon, leaving too many unanswered questions. Could they have actually produced all the figures that appeared on the cover of the first issue? Would people have actually purchased a Dazzler action figure in 1985? What could life have been like if it had been treated like a number one instead of a number two? Hey. <laughs> is how you know it's cash. Thanks for watching. Please, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, then hit like. That's what that stands for. Leave a comment below if you're a Secret Wars lover or you're just hearing about this line for the first time now. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the Toy Galaxy Market Research where we ask you the question, which is funnier, Secret Unicorn Farts or Uzi Kuntaj Wars? <laughs> T-shirt's coming soon.